Okay, good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you're at, everyone. Uh, my name is Bob Woods, and you are uh, dialed into Social Selling Wednesday. We have this blab every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, wherever that translates for you is cool. And uh, we talk about uh, things social selling related, as well as LinkedIn and Twitter. Sometimes we get into basic sales uh, conversations as, as well, but uh, all, all centering around the social world world and the intersection of sales. My name is Bob Woods. I am a social business strategist at PeopleLinks as well as executive vice president at Social Sales Link. Both companies deal with uh, with training and social selling. PeopleLinks also has a neat and nifty platform that helps uh, larger companies uh, empower their sales forces and employees with tools to help them social sell. So Ted, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Okay, thanks, Bob. I'm Ted sure. Pedromo. I'm author of Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn for Business, Ultimate Guide to Twitter for Business from Entrepreneur Press. And I've been doing social media and online advertising for gosh, 14 years now. Can you believe it? Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's a long time. That's I'm not getting older. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting better. Just right. getting That's better. It. Michael. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Ted. Delighted to be with you. Uh, my name is Michael DeGroote, stayingaliveuk.com. I also teach people about social selling, LinkedIn, and I produce whiteboard animation videos to help you share your story. Delighted to be here and delighted to join the show again and uh, talk about things that we fancy. Cool, very good. I'm just I'm trying to uh, promote real quick uh, us on... LinkedIn here or on Twitter actually. I wish I wish that uh, Blab had had a way to more directly connect with with LinkedIn, but um, you know, hey, Twitter's just as uh, Twitter's almost as 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 good depending on if you're searching the the right hashtags. So um, so for everyone out there, uh, please feel free to drop in questions via the live chat as well as just using uh, slash Q before you enter in a question. And as we go along, we, we have some topics that we want to discuss as well, but uh, we will definitely veer off and answer any questions that you all have here as well, because you are the people who we're here for. So with that in mind, uh, Michael, why don't you go ahead and pick up with, uh, with, with, with what you wanted to discuss, which is a topic that doesn't get probably nearly as much discussion as, as it should out there when it comes to uh, especially LinkedIn and social selling. Yeah, thank you for that introduction. <clears throat> My question really for us to just have a debate about, a discussion about is the LinkedIn company page, which over the years has had some iterations and changes and various other things. But it's still a piece of real estate that I don't think people are making the best use of. Mm -hmm. And coupled with that, a couple of years ago, they also then introduced something else called the showcase page, mm -hmm. uh, which is like a sub level or of your company page, where I suppose if you're a big organization, let's say Virgin, uh, you could be, you know, have got virgin atlantic you could have virgin rail you could have you know virgin beauty or whatever as your different showcase pages for all the different divisions mm -hmm. uh, underneath the, the the top brand as it were mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um i don't think a lot of people know about the showcase page for starters I would agree and that. the look and feel of it is different to the company page mm -hmm. i don't think people know that if you have a company page, how you can link it to your uh, profile uh, mm -hmm. in your experience section and all of that good stuff. So the first question I guess is, is it worth having a company page on LinkedIn? It's a great question. <laughs> That's a great question. Go ahead, Ted. It sounds, it, it sounds like you may have a, a, a thought or two on that because I do as well. Oh, at least once a week people ask me that question. You know, do I need a company page? If so, how do I promote it? Because the, the challenge is for a smaller company, I don't know, Adobe, it's easy. They have hundreds of thousands of followers. Mm -hmm. People just go there and they have different showcase pages for their different brands. Mm -hmm. But for like my company page, 
do I want to push people there to follow me there? I have like 68 followers. I don't have that many. I don't really promote it that much. Right. So do I focus on that or growing my Twitter followers or growing my email list or getting more Facebook fans? That's my constant. Everybody asks me that. Right. Yeah. I guess, um, I guess that it all depends on what type of company you have or are involved in or are an employee of, or, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's always that it depends thing going on, but you know, for, I think for a solo practitioner such as Ted, you know, it may not be such a big deal, but for larger companies where, um, where they do need to brand themselves as a company, I think that company pages definitely work in in more there, um, especially when it comes to uh, especially when it comes to their employees who are on especially LinkedIn and and have their companies linked in through their um, through their own personal profile as 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 Michael discussed in fact I just gave a, a webinar on this uh, to a uh, to a fortune 100 company last week just in terms of um, and, and their recruiting side actually and just in terms of how important it is to look at um, from from a corporate side everyone's uh, all of their employees, rather individual LinkedIn um, profiles, as almost mini sites for for the company, and then uh, to support that with a strong company page that has um, showcase pages, that has uh, company news, and maybe even related stories that are being shared from from outside sources running running through those feeds, and that's and that's actually one way for a larger company, at least, to get followers to their to their company page would be to do something like that. Now, as you get down in size with companies, you know, I think it just depends on the individual company and its structure as to whether or not a company page is is really worth devoting a lot of time besides, you know, putting that proverbial flag in the ground and proclaiming, you know, this is our company page and maybe sharing something through it once a week and and to just have a company page there so that any individual employee or contractor or whoever wants to link to a company page through their profile just to show that the company is legit more than anything else, you know, maybe at that point it's worth devoting a little bit of time to a company page. But for someone like Ted, who has um, who is who who is doing all kinds of individual branding for for his business, is it worth Voting a lot of time to a company page, which you know, it's like I said, it depends on depends on how the company is structured and what its goals are. I would say more than anything else, Michael, would you agree with that? And I know I talked a lot, but would you agree with that? <laughs> <laughs> I agree with some of some of that. I mean, okay. in in this world of SEO that everybody is obsessed by, sometimes mm -hmm. um, I guess it is worth definitely, even if you're a solopreneur to have that company page because mm -hmm. it helps your branding mm -hmm. and it gets you that little icon inside your personal profile. Right. And I, I agree with Ted, you, you don't really get that many followers and you have to actually ask for it too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe yeah. we need to be doing more promoting of, of our pro of our page, but I guess a lot of people will go, well, why do I need to follow their page or his page or her page? with there is another side to it and that mm -hmm. is if you have a particular product or service that you're looking to promote and you have posted an update to your company page that is then excellent real estate to do these promoted posts or sponsored sponsored posts or whatever mm -hmm. they're called um now this this is comes into your territory Ted where you know this goes into advertising but and I and we all know it's expensive on LinkedIn and <laughs> yet it depends where people are in terms of their journey in terms of getting brand awareness it is a really good way to get brand awareness and I don't know if you've noticed on the mobile app but I've noticed a lot of sponsored posts on the mobile app coming through on my newsfeed. And although I'm not clicking through on them, I'm noticing them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and it does create a bit of awareness. 
So even if we said, okay, we don't get a lot of activity, we don't get a lot of followers, it's a good vehicle to do a bit of advertising, uh, potentially, potentially, if people are interested in doing that. I just had a quick look at people links. And mm -hmm. it's interesting, actually, because this, this is where people get a little bit confused. So people links has got a company page, which has got about 2300 odd followers. And they've also created a showcase page, which has a few hundred or even less followers. And it's exactly the same product and service being promoted on both. Yeah. And this is where <laughs> confusion comes in because you kind of decide, well, what do I actually do with that? I mean, I essentially do three things. I do LinkedIn coaching training. I do social selling coaching training. I do whiteboard animation. So I created three different showcase pages, you know, a few years mm -hmm. back. However, I don't really do anything with these showcase pages. You know, <laughs> I post all my updates to the company page because I think that's the main real estate I want people to get to. But actually, the showcase page looks nicer in terms of the content feed on there. So yeah. mm -hmm. it really is kind of it's pulling me apart. So where do I spend my effort? So for me, that's the kind of conundrum, really. I don't think LinkedIn have done a very good job with it, to be honest. There you I have say. to get followers on each showcase page, too, in addition to your main page. That's right. right. Which yep. is frustrating. Right. Yeah. Especially for solopreneurs or someone who or, or a company that's really small and is trying to build a company page at the same time all their employees are trying to build themselves. I mean, I that that would definitely be a, a, a conundrum. And I don't necessarily see a real a, 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 a pat solution that I could offer in like five seconds, basically. I had a client, I was, gosh, two years ago, I think it was, they're an app developer. So we did some searches on LinkedIn for app developers and these mm -hmm. one company page kept coming at top. So I kind of did my SEO thing and reverse sure. engineered it. Yeah. They did not post any content ever on mm. there. They just created the basic profile wow. and they were ranked number one by far. Like wow. every coach we did. So I kind of figured out that they had more followers than their competition. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Then I first thought, well, maybe they went to Fiverr and bought some followers because they're not a big company, but they're ranking right. number one. Huh. So ranking for search terms as your company, that's a huge advantage to have a company page. Are there um are 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 there Fiverr set up right now for uh for companies to to get um to get followers specifically through LinkedIn? Oh, I'm sure you can. Yeah, I It'll yeah. Be fake people probably that's the problem. Yeah, I know that's. I mean, because it's it, it's it's obviously a lot easier to do that through 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 Facebook and um and through Twitter. I was just wondering if you know if if someone entrep entrepreneurial enough would have actually thought of to do something like that with 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 LinkedIn. That that be that'd be real interesting to see. Actually, I'm not sure, but. Um, yeah, it's it's like the fake Twitter followers. Eventually, they sure. catch on and they all disappear one day. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. I think yeah, just for that SEO factor, it you definitely should have one. That well, we got to get some more followers, so we start asking people. And if you don't post content, that's another thing. I go to some company pages; they haven't posted in a year and a half or two years. Yeah. yeah. What's that? Your people come, they click on your profile, they click on your company name, they go to a company page that's stagnant. Right. Right. Totally yeah. agree. Totally agree. And you know, it's it's another piece of brand real estate. That's how I look at it in terms of getting your brand represented. Uh, just making sure not to miss that. And it's something that people do miss and they don't spend a lot of time on. It's for me. I mean, although I know it's duplication and people say, well, you shouldn't be duplicating, but I do send stuff to my company page as well as to my personal profile on LinkedIn. And it's just to make sure there is stuff going on there on a regular basis mm -hmm. uh, and that it's not, it's not dormant as such. Right. So, right. And it's, it's super easy to do, you know, using Buffer and uh, it's, I don't need to worry about it. It's just, just keeping it fresh. But what I am ignoring, I'm ignoring those showcase pages. I'm not really doing anything with them uh, meaningful 
and if you look at those ted you'll see posts on there that are very old now mm -hmm. and and very little activity and mm -hmm. personally i haven't done a very good job on it but i i you know i almost wish that the showcase format was actually the company page format in the way that these the posts sit there and it's just a nicer view experience or looking at you know user interface so you know who knows who knows what's going to happen there so, so i'm sorry go ahead. Go. yeah I, the 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 one thing that you said that kind of perked my especially because i'm because i'm a buffer user is, is 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 can you can you use buffer to post to a company page yeah absolutely. i had no idea yeah but not to showcase pages yeah you can as well to showcase pages oh, okay oh wow I, I stopped them. You can, you can, you can even post to groups using Buffer too. Um, to link I had groups. no idea. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I, and I use you're a Buffer to, expert now. Uh, yeah. yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> I, I, I am love a it. big That's fan. Great. I am a big fan. I have to. I am admit. too. <clears throat> I am too. But I didn't know that uh, that 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 you could do all that with with Buffer. That's very. That's. I'm. I've got. I've got ideas turning in my mind right now about using that now. But. Uh, but yeah. That's. Yeah, there you go. That's. That's. That's very interesting. And. And actually, obviously, I mean, anything that makes content sharing easier to those pages, I think, only. Only helps. Um, a, a drive an argument within a company to you know actually use these pages a little bit more because one of the reasons why. I haven't posted a lot to the social sales link um, page on on LinkedIn. Is just primarily is just because I forget that it's there more than more than anything else. And I have a feeling that that's just what happens with a lot of companies. I mean, because they don't they don't put that value there. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. We've got a company page on LinkedIn too. We should probably you, do something with that. Yeah, you know. And the, one of the biggest problems <clears throat> that I've come across that I've had to untangle for people with LinkedIn help is that they've assigned somebody as an administrator and they leave the organization leave the yes you know, yeah and they haven't substituted or added somebody else on so it's like okay we'll untangle that for you um it gets done but it's it's something that happens a lot and this comes back to people not really understanding or realizing what they've got to do with it yeah yeah, I just had that happen this week. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, that's funny. It's a that's common mistake. Funny. Yeah, very so, common. So it, it's coming up on twenty minutes after the hour. Uh, we have an open seat. If anyone wants to take that and join directly in the conversation uh, via video, you don't have to show yourself. Uh, you can just do it via audio as well. Otherwise, you can send us a message via live chat. Uh, you can either just send a message or do it's Q and then slash right to to, to ask a question then specifically. It's a slash capital Q. Capital Q, yeah, slash capital Q. I knew it was. It's not easy. 50, 50 it's shot. not intuitive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's really not. Um, it doesn't have to be capital anymore, I don't think. Okay, because that's good. If you put the backslash <laughs> in, it actually gives you all the different commands that are coming up now. Uh, there and it it's is. Actually, a small Q. There we go. Yeah, actually, yeah, actually, uh, I just did small Q, and 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 that's what happened right there. So that well, was a live test. Bob. You had yes. posted something it was from the LinkedIn writing group yesterday about mm -hmm. content not being seen by as many people as it was before this big algorithm change. Yep. This kind of goes with the company pages in a way. If you only have 20 followers of your company page, only 20 people are going to see that post. That's but not even – and that's not even the case too because um, – because Bryn, who is um, who is um, who is a part of of our of of one group that that we'll be talking about a, a, as we go along here, but but she's a social selling coach as well. Um, she has taken an kind of an informal um, test sample of just her followers. So these aren't connections; these are just her followers. And 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 so whenever she publishes something, you would assume that. A follower is someone who wants to be notified when you publish something. Right. Well, she said that she she just kind of randomly sampled ten of her followers. Nobody is getting um, notifications of when she publishes, and these are people who have said we want to be notified when you publish. So, I mean, this so this whole LinkedIn algorithm thing with um, you know with uh, 
with with alerting people versus not alerting people. I mean, let me back up a little bit. I understand why they did it because just like anything else, there there was abuse of it, and people probably started complaining about you know all all the spam posts that were made and you know everything else that I'm sure probably happened. But you know with 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 LinkedIn and 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 how things swing you know way wide uh, pendulum style from one end to to the other, they they took things to the exact opposite end, and now I mean. A, you hardly get any views anymore because nobody's being alerted because of this algorithm thing. And also, um, I used to uh, pitch a lot of my pieces to uh, directly to the LinkedIn Pulse channel. And once upon a time, I'd say about 75% of them were, were actually picked up and used in like the uh, the uh, LinkedIn Tips channel or the sales, uh, sales solution channel or what the heck ever it's called. But anymore, I mean, not only do they not pick up it seems um, a lot of stories from people in general. The stuff that they do use, I'm, I'm not sure where they're getting it from. But I mean, even mm -hmm. even the uh, LinkedIn Pulse channels have 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 changed too, and it's and it's definitely to to their detriment. And it's to the point now where I'm probably going to start publishing again here pretty quick. But LinkedIn used to be my number one place to to publish, and now. With, with with the strategy that I'm going to be roll, rolling out here pretty quick, it's probably going to be like number three or number four, just because the the time that I used to put into it that used to see a lot of dividends just isn't there anymore. And LinkedIn is just putting more more and more roadblocks up for for that exposure. And I don't need to be taking that kind of time for 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 the nosedive that I'm seeing in um in in, in people reading the article. I'm not sure how how you all feel about that. If you even publish to 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 LinkedIn or not, but but I used to do that a lot. I just I just don't do it nearly as much anymore. I mean, they they really ticked me off. Yeah, wow. I try to publish at least one article a week. Mm -hmm. But also the interactions, like you share a lot of content with people. Yep. And it's interesting. Every time I log into LinkedIn, no matter what device it is, Bob is number one in the news feed, <laughs> day or night. And and I mean and that just goes to a, a posting strategy which which actually um uh, about a uh, about a month or two ago I published a a piece um called called the unpublisher strategy which is basically for for people who want to get noticed on LinkedIn but yet not but yet not uh, actually do blog posts on LinkedIn here's another way how how to do that basically so i'm practicing what i'm preaching and using all um all of those those techniques that i have in that article and it it really seems to be working in in terms of in terms of getting people clicking in terms of getting people commenting and liking and everything else too and it's not that difficult to do but it does take a little bit of time but it's but it's been just doing that alone has been more successful for me lately on linkedin than publishing that's great. You should put out that link in the chat window. Yeah, I will. Let me. Um, that was a great article. Yeah. Uh, why don't you all? Why don't you all talk amongst yourselves, and I will go and get that here real quick. Let me go ahead. I think the that. algorithm does learn as you. I start. I share a lot of Bob stuff and like it, and basically yeah. certain people you just seem to see more often because you are liking and sharing and commenting on their things. Right. So, so it's you know typical how an algorithm should work. These are people yeah. you're interested in. Show more of that content. So, so there is the um, so there is the unpublisher, which 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 I made a cool little um, story graphic for as well. That 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 little in square lends itself to so much fun in terms of in in terms of altering it and and, and doing things for for your own uh, for your own fun and and uh, and graphics pleasure, I guess you'd say. <laughs> Yeah, there's so, a lot of articles out there recently about what LinkedIn, they're stumbling, they've lost yeah. focus, they're going in yeah. so many directions, they don't know where they're going. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it you, was... you often get that uh, about any organization when they don't do it very well in the city, I think. <laughs> everybody, yeah. everybody jumps on the, you know, it's like peer review going on. That the spotlight is going on, kind of, and picking up on every little bit. That's that's not right. Well, I think and, what started it was the uh, stock price plunge. I mean, mm. that's when I mean that's when that 
white hot spotlight really really hit it um after you know after they they came out with their with their numbers that um and i i quite frankly forget what it was they said that made their stock drop i think it was just in terms of growth that that their growth was 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 going to slow basically so now everyone is looking at everything that linkedin is doing and basically you know picking a park picking apart what they think is a carcass at this point, which is not a carcass. I mean, LinkedIn is still doing good, but I mean, but, but there are some areas that, that I think do need to be examined much more closely. And, and LinkedIn definitely needs to, um, needs to take a harder look at some of the things that it's doing because it's taken off their, their members and they, and they live and die by their members. I think it started too last year when they started all these big interface updates. They changed everything about LinkedIn, but they didn't teach anyone like what, here's what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. Here's how you do these functions now. It's it's yep. part of the frustration. That was what you got a year ago. They started those updates. Yeah. 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 And uh, sorry, was that the group updates you're talking about? Uh, groups. That's like all of, updates. Whole, <laughs> yeah. Everything. Your experience totally changed yeah. a couple of times last year. Yep. Because there is a there's a group community LinkedIn group that I joined last year when there was this big fallout around the changes they'd made to groups and how all the um, moderators were very unhappy that they'd taken a lot of facilities away from them. And um, LinkedIn had started this group and they were talking to the community or so it seemed or it seemed to be one way traffic. I saw an announcement the other day to say we're closing this group down now because we've we've done what we needed to do. And I think it's as of tomorrow, the group is for for the for the moderators where they were able to give some feedback to LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. They get I think they're getting so much abuse on there, they're shutting it down. Oh my god. Uh because it's such negative press. Yeah. I'm not talking about groups at per se, just this one group. Just the one group, right? <laughs> yeah. Community yeah, we probably people. should make that clear. But yeah, yeah. Th th this one group. Yeah, that's very interesting. This is that's kind of a case study for social selling in a way. Just watching what bit. they're doing you because know, other companies in cat, you know, they hit a speed bump. They either address it head on or some of mm -hmm. them try to just cover it up and ignore it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a really tough call for these big tech companies. And I, I would classify LinkedIn as a tech company because some mm -hmm. other people are doing it really well and they have a very much of an open door policy and they want to to hear people's issues. So let's take Buffer as a for yeah, instance. I was just right? gonna say Buffer. Yep, exactly. So they have a new product called Respond or Get Respond. Yeah, um, Response, yeah yeah respond where you can respond to tweets and things mm -hmm. and they invited me i i they invited me to be part of their beta group so they then added me also to their community on slack okay so now you you join this community and there's thousands of people on there giving feedback on their experience in their new product and okay, fine. A couple of weeks later, they still launched the product. It's still in beta, but you are able to give feedback on there. So they've created a community and openly request people to give them feedback. And what happens is you don't get abuse. You actually get some really good ideas coming up from the public, from the users, and you get some fantastic intelligence mm -hmm. because they've been open and transparent about it. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> And unfortunately, when LinkedIn go hiding or even dare say Apple do the same, they go hiding when there is a problem, you know, and come out with a big announcement, maybe in six months time or, or whatever. It's it just gets people, it hacks people off. It kind of goes, well, why mm -hmm. are you hiding? You know, why aren't you transparent about it? Right. And I think yeah. this is all around fear of money uh you know the, the the stock price and all of those things are implicated yep but i think it's the opposite you know be more transparent and be honest about what's going on in your organization I agree. um yeah. the best the best company are always the ones that go i hold my hand up we haven't got it right but we're looking to fix it you know and this is what we're doing to fix it and then right. you go right okay that's all we wanted to hear 
right? You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's all yeah. you need to say. That's yeah. all you need to say. Yeah, Don't be exactly. silent about it. Anyway, that's anyway. enough of, of hacking off LinkedIn. But <laughs> yeah, and actually, we've got a question here. So let's so let's go to that. Uh, Ellen Julian is asking. My company has offered to make a sub company page for my little business unit. Um, do sub pages ev even? Or ever get seen? I guess even would 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 get seen would would be another way to put that. What what do you guys think? Oh, we kind of mentioned that if you don't have followers, yep. people won't see it. So only those followers get notified. Sometimes they get notified. Sometimes they get notified. So I mean, so so you have to have a strategy to to start not only driving people to that, but then to start commenting on on things so that so that it gets seen in their news feed and then other people would would, would get interested to, to to click on that and then hopefully they'll follow at that point and you know it's just another kind of flavor of um of of, of your basic social selling strategy at, at that point but i mean just overall i do think that it would be worth it to 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 get that uh, sub co company page going, but then there is more to it than just putting up the page, just like anything else in the digital world anymore. You you need to have a strategy to to drive people to that. And um, once 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 you have that, and once you start devoting some time and resources to it, you know it's it, it's quite possible that that the effort will be worth it going going down the line a little bit more. LinkedIn has a best practices guide. I found it last week on their site. For really? company pages. There and you go. It's a short document. It's the obvious thing. It says you got to get followers. You got to invite people. And what LinkedIn said to be successful, you need to post three or four times a day on your company page. Ouch. Like, wow. That's probably a little too much. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I mean, only only a Fortune 100 size company would 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 probably generate enough stuff and to and to staff and to have enough well, people, I'm, quite I'm, frankly, I'm to do it. I'm posting three times a day on there because I'm posting three times a day elsewhere. Oh, that's yeah, that's true because 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 you've got buffer going for that, so that's so it. that definitely makes it. So you got that much yeah. content where you can queue it yeah, up. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, and yeah, you're right, and I've 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 got a search for content that I like and I want to share with my audience that I think they'd be interested in, and. I, I, there is one really, really good reason. I, I assume, Ellen, with a sub company, you mean showcase page. Yeah, um, that's what I was. That, that's why I was yeah, there, there is one really good reason for doing it, and that is to get the name. Because, like all these yeah. days, these company pages or showcase pages, if you have the same name as somebody else, you mm -hmm. can't get it. So, yeah, even if you're not going to do anything with it, that much, just have a banner up there and a logo or something. Still do it because um, you just have the name or the slash and whatever the the title is of the showcase page. So at least for that reason, do it. Would Actually, be my advice. Up in Google search results too. Did you know company pages are indexed by Google? Because I, di I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, I didn't know that. So I think I any content you post, posted. if you post articles on there, in theory, Google can find those and post them. So huh. I haven't ever seen a LinkedIn article from a company page on a LinkedIn search result or Google search result, but mm -hmm. you know the company pages and the name are important. They will show up in Google search results. Well, actually, you're right. I've I've just searched for my company, and I've I'm actually number three. On Google, on the first page, is my company I page. There you I go. Five. I five. There you go. Excellent. So I'm going to yeah. start posting content to mine. <laughs> that's funny. No, that's great. Good, good. So hey, if 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 you didn't realize it by now, Google works. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I saw something that Google <laughs> said. 70% of their searches last year came from mobile devices. Like on Google? Wow. Yes. Wow. So everything is going mobile very quickly. So make sure those websites are mobile responsive. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's that's something. That, that that's an incredible number. I just can't sit there and type searches on the little screen. <laughs> I guess yeah, I no, my glasses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's where that's where using the um, I've 
I've, I've been using voice more and more on, on my phone just, just for like simple searches and, and things like that. And it, uh, it, it tends to work pretty well. It, it doesn't get it right all the time, but it, it does most of the time. Yeah, it's getting better. Yep. Yeah. Well, good, right. good. So if, uh, if, if anyone else, if anyone out there rather wants to join in, we do have an open seat left. Uh, we are taking questions via chat as well. Uh, we'll, we'll probably go for about another five, five to 10 minutes if, uh, if, if nobody else chimes in, but, um, does, does, does anyone else have, have we've, uh, we've, covered quite a bit in terms of uh, company pages. We probably talk more about company pages than people out there talk about company pages, unfortunately. So um, anything else going on? I'm yeah, just wondering what's they your are favorite? North. Where do you get the most traction on social media other than LinkedIn when you post content? Twitter. Twitter? Hands down, Twitter. And, 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 and that just goes for, for, for me personally, at least that just goes to a, a combination of, of good content and hashtags. Yeah. Hashtags are so important. Yep. Yeah. Um, two to three max. And then, you know, um, there was a little bit of time when people were doing a lot of tagging of, of, of other people. And and sometimes the that that list would get kind of long, and I'm not sure I, I would do that just because being on the receiving end of it, every once in a while it's kind of like was 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 a little bit annoying. But I could see where you know uh, tagging people in a in kind of a restrained way would 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 work well too. But um, but I definitely think just you know sharing sharing quality content in in a way that that gets clicked on and then um, and then hashtagging it so that so that other people can can find it is is uh, is, is is the way to go on Twitter. How about you, Michael? Yeah, I would I would say that's that's pro I do get more activity on LinkedIn than I do on Twitter. Yeah, I do too. Um, at the moment, and. But what since I've been using a little plug for Buffer again, <laughs> since I've been using their Respond product, it's been so super easy to engage in a bit of conversation with people. And that has really helped Twitter a lot for me. I've not really wanted to respond to notifications that much inside Twitter on my mobile, but I'm kind of every morning I can see all of the different mentions that I have on Twitter and I just kind of respond to them either with a direct message or uh, with a public message. And that's been very useful for me. Okay. Yeah. What, what about you, Ted? I get a lot of response from Twitter. I get a lot of engagement on Facebook, but I use Facebook more for fun. I don't do a lot of business promotion there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't either. I mean, I have a page just just for myself on on Facebook, but 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 what I'm scheduling posts through through Buffer, um, usually I've got like two 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 kind of channels in my mind going. So one goes to um, Facebook, Twitter, and my Google Plus, Plus page all at the same time, just so I'm feeding all, all three of those at once, and then one is separate. For for Twitter, the the content is the same, but because Twitter is Twitter, and you just need to to, to do things differently, I need to um, when I'm when I'm typing out the tweet, it needs to be a little different than I would for for LinkedIn. But but basically, that's 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 kind of my strategy, and and I'm I'm only doing the the Facebook page and and the Google Plus thing just just for the clout score. I mean, if it wasn't for clout, I'd be using just Facebook and LinkedIn, or I mean LinkedIn and and Twitter and and that'd be about it. See, I notice a lot of my clients are my friends on Facebook and they're on my email list, which oh, is okay. interesting because I hardly ever do business stuff on Facebook. Mm -hmm. so they do find me other places and migrate over there. Or right, they come yeah. to Facebook after they're a client. I'm not sure yeah. what the order is, but yeah. So it's, yeah. it's interesting. All right, Bob. Can we? Can we? Do you think it's appropriate to have a little chat about Slack community? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Let's go for it. I, Ted, I found uh, a site called. Yeah, I was going to look that up. I haven't done that. Yet. Slowfile.com. S L O, no W file.com, and it lists all the 
Slack communities out there. Hmm. Um, so people are putting communities up there. It seems to be a big thing where you can just join, you know, from the public. You don't get approved or anything. You can just, if you're a Slack user and you've got an account, you can just join them. Oh, wow. And, and wow. you can list your, your own community. So I created one just to have a test um, called uh, what I can do. So let me see if I can share the link. Is it the social selling one? Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, that won't show. Um, is it gonna? Is the is the link gonna work? Oh, look, it worked. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's how that works. That's how that works. <laughs> Spot time. Some somebody had to put their uh, toe into the pool on that one. So, 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 so I'm glad that that we uh, that we know how to yeah, do that now. Yeah, so, so if you click on that and and you're already well, I guess you don't even need to be a Slack user at that point. You can probably just sign up and get an yeah, account and do that all at the Slack same time. Doing that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Awesome. So what what we can do there if we are interested and share this with our blab watchers, mm -hmm. we could invite them to come and continue the conversation inside a community, kind of off blab. In yeah. between time, and build a little bit of a community there. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. That that's, that's my my thought. So, uh, Ellen or anybody else who's watching, yeah, um, come and join us on social selling on Slack or social selling. I've called the social selling tips, but the name somehow I managed to keep it as social selling. So, <laughs> uh, but that was already taken inside slack or in inside uh not inside slack inside the um slow slow whatever oh okay <laughs> slow file. Yeah, the slow, yeah slow file yeah so um anyway it's just an experiment at this time just to see what it could do for us and we can just add channels i put in social selling wednesday questions and then tips you know so Anybody who has some tips, they can share tips, they can ask questions, and then we can do a bit of engagement. Okay. I think it might be a cool place to, I think it's gonna grow. I think Slack is going to be the community of choice going forward. Um, mm -hmm. You know, bigger than LinkedIn groups, bigger than Facebook groups, bigger than Google Plus groups. I, I really believe Slack that the way their interaction is on there is so super easy you yeah. know uh people like linkedin could really watch and see what they're up to and doing because uh anyway that that's the idea and let's let's have a go and see what happens yeah yeah it looks yeah. great i love yeah. slack yeah i, mean, I do too <laughs> i do too i i i really like it i'm i i now have I now have three communities in Slack now that then that I'm a part of. So yeah, this very cool. I like that a lot. Great. Okay, that was my point on Slack. Okay, awesome. very good. So if if no one else has any questions, I think it's 11:45. I think we've done enough for today. What do you think, gentlemen? Yeah, okay, great yeah. stuff, Bob. Okay, that sounds good. So so thanks for joining okay. us. We appreciate it. And we will see you back here next Wednesday, same time, same Slack or Slack channel. I, <laughs> I had the perfect saying for that and I screwed it up. Same <laughs> same time, same blab channel or something like that, basically. Thanks everybody. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Ted. Thanks, Take care. You. Bye. <laughs>